Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I begin construction of a Starship space station. This was during a live stream. This is a space station built by Starships for Starships. We have their uh, quest module and a harmony module from the ISS. I'm using the NASA ISS models that I adapted for Kerbal Space Program. I don't have a cargo Starship with my current look. Uh, I updated the textures, so I'm using the old cargo starship that I had. I will create a new cargo starship with more room inside. But here we go, launching on the new version of the Super Heavy that I have. I updated textures on that. And we are going to... you can see the grid fins splayed out as apparently they're going to be. And we do reserve fuel on the Super Heavy for its eventual return. We are launching from Brownsville. And I'm not using 1.11 because the EVA propellant consumption with realism overhaul in 1.11 is way off and we're going to need EVA propellant. Uh, we're going to do EVAs here. Uh, in fact, this is all using the pass-through system, so the Kerbals are going to be floating inside things all over the place. And so the core of the station are these ISS modules, and we're going to have a whole bunch of them. Uh, I've got Columbus done, I've got uh, Destiny, I've got these two. Uh, so they're going to be the core and then starships will attach on either end basically. So there'll be basically room for two starships. We could expand to four but I doubt it. And uh, Kerbals will be able to go from one starship into another through the tunnel formed by these ISS modules. So we're having them, uh, having the modules depart the starship, uh, moving the starship away from the modules in fact. Uh, they're free floating, they don't have any control right now. We're gonna attach these little tugs that I have, these Canada tugs as I call them, uh, from my previous ISS construction. They are still very useful. And the two Canada tugs are going to hold on to the station while we get the other modules to it. So. A little bit tricky there for a sec though because it was just freely rotating without the little tug on it. But now it's stabilized and we get to have this one on. And you can see the four ports as with the Unity slash all these node modules from the ISS have the four side ports. But I think we're going to put supply containers on the other two ports or maybe a supply container on one side and then pseudo panels and radiators on the other side uh, would be best. So we're not going to have four starships, we're just going to have two. Okay, so I try re-entry with my flaps here, try to balance it properly. I, I tried descent mode, that was a mistake. <laughs> that threw it off. Um, yeah, it's just a mess, really. Getting the starships back is not a thing. Uh, to be honest, it's not a thing that I'm going to focus on a lot. I know other people uh, do it and have done it, and it's fine. I'm more interested in payloads and operations. I'm really not interested in the whole landing business, so that I'll leave to other people. It is fancy and complicated, of course, but uh, it is something that SpaceX is going to work on, and what I'm much more interested in is using Starship for things. So, spending a whole lot of time on the landing, which everybody else seems to be doing, and SpaceX itself is doing, doesn't seem like a very interesting thing to me. So, yeah. It would be tough though. It, it would be a challenge. I mean, there's no question it's go it would be a challenge worth worth doing. It's just not gonna occupy my mind in the same way. Because I know that other people are gonna be doing it. So anyway, on with the payloads. Now, there is a limited amount of cargo room in the Starship and I wanted to get a whole lot of these modules up. I decided that the best thing to do would be strap them onto the outside, basically. And so this is how I do it. Uh, four of these Destiny modules strapped on the side of the Starship. And this time I can use the non-cargo Starship since I'm not putting them inside anyway. So this is a pass-through Starship, new textures, and decks inside and those plant planters that I had inside there. And also a sort of cockpit here. And I put the seats in for because it's the pass-through system so you have to have the command chairs otherwise you can't put Kerbals. And also we need a Kerbal inventory system container because we want the drills so that the engineers can do their work. I didn't know exactly what the engineers were doing at this point but 
I figured I'd need them, so, and that proves to be the case. So here we go with this awkward starship carrying the Destiny modules on the outside. With nose cones for aerodynamics, of course. I mean, we wouldn't forget that. It worked out fine. We got through the thick part of the atmosphere without any trouble. And here we go, reserving the fuel again on the Super Heavy. Separating and ignition of the Starship. And on we go. Obviously, this is not in any way using up the capacity of Starship. We've got plenty of extra cargo capacity, should we want to use it. But I, I it's not like I could fit anything more. Um, yeah. I didn't intend to carry more modules at this point. It would be enough of a juggling act to get these four on first. You can see that we make orbit over Florida. There we go. And on to the station. Unfortunately, rendezvous required additional burns and those were mostly done with RCS, so that took a while. But there we are approaching. Uh, lighting the vacuum engines produces quite a lot of thrust, so that would be more for large transfers than minor adjustments to our orbit. Okay, so the tugs that were sort of on the end of the Destiny modules uh, grab the first one. And the sun is setting, of course, because obviously we're going to have to do all this at nighttime. And here we are coming into dock with the first one of these. Unfortunately, the decoupler came with it. I always mess that up somehow. Anyway, so that's on. We'll just get one of the Kerbals to disassemble that part. We can do that. And we're grabbing another one. It actually takes a fair amount of time to do this with the little tugs. They're helpful, but they're not fast, especially when carrying these modules. And we have drifted away somewhat. You can see 1.3 kilometers. We'll have to bring the Starship closer as well. You'll notice during the course of this video that we go through multiple day-night cycles. And so does during a live stream, and we go through multiple day-night cycles. Uh, it was a five-hour stream altogether. So, yep, very realistic in a way. In a way. Let's not push that, but anyway. The tugs are very efficient, though. They don't consume a whole lot of their Delta V like this. I could probably change them to something like nitrogen and still make it work out, though they won't be able to do quite as much like that. Also, they need larger volume. They wouldn't be as small. Okay, so Starship is closer, and we get Elster Kerman to start doing some engineering work for us. Uh, we want to remove the little decouplers, but also I noticed that there was a fault in a docking port. It was flipped the wrong way around. So we need Elster to correct that and flip that docking port the correct way around. And so here we go. The joys of the pass-through system are mainly in departing our ships. Otherwise, it's sort of a mess. I need to place hull cam cameras around or something. Otherwise, it's, it's tough sometimes. But this part is fun. This embarking is nice. That's, uh, that final uh, deck on Starship is sort of an airlock deck, so the top hatch closes when the bomb hatch opens. Well, technically the top hatch closes first, and then the hatch to the outside opens. Anyway, we're headed to that one docking port that slipped the wrong way around. And after some finagling, Elster will be able to get it. But this is tough because there's no surface at the center for this to attach to, right? There is a node, but you can't surface attach it because it's just a hole. The, the Kerbal can pass through it. And same with the port itself is an empty hole. Uh, first time I try to place it, we have a little bit of an issue. Because that's obviously not right. It's not rotated right, and it's not, it's not on the right node, actually. And that causes a whole business with the Kerbal flying off. Some glitchiness, and of course all the RCS thrusters on the tugs stabilizing the station. Desperately. So we try that again. I think that docking port actually flew off and we had to grab a different one. And I placed it incorrectly again. 
I'm trying to fix it. You can see there's two nodes. There's an inner node and outer node. The outer node is for the docking port. The inner node is for the hatch. Uh, because we can close these uh, ports off with hatches. And... You know, that's obviously useful, uh, but anyway, I thought I had the docking port right, but I actually got it accidentally on the inner node rather than the outer node, and we'll find that out. Anyway, Elster gets rid of those decouplers and heads back over to the starship. We've used some EV propellant. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do this in 1.11 as I have it right now. I, I, maybe there's been an update to Realism Overhaul or something else that fixes the EV propellant issue, but... It just consumes way too quickly, and uh, some people have proposed something, but I haven't looked into it in detail yet, so, yeah. For now, this sort of business cannot be done in 1.11, as far as I can tell. Okay, so the tugs have to go and grab a third one of these modules and attach it to the other side. And here comes one of the tugs. Our ballet continues. Obviously it would have been more balanced to have the second module placed on the opposite side it's on right now, but because the docking port was reversed I decided to dock it where it is. Leaves the station somewhat imbalanced temporarily, but it's better to have it free drift until the Kerbal actually gets the docking port reversed. Okay, well, the problem is the docking port is too far in, and with it being too far in, that means the colliders are going to get in the way of this docking, and I don't realize that yet, but as we get closer, it will become apparent, and the music turned out to be appropriate. The music is just playing randomly in VLC Media Player. Sometimes it works out for us, sometimes it doesn't. I should have known with this music playing that something, something silly was going to happen. And the result is, uh, it's just, it's just not gonna connect. At least there wasn't some glitch where stuff flew off like the Kerbal did. It wasn't that bad, but yeah, we're we are not getting a connection there. So we're going to need the Kerbal to deploy again. So out goes Elster, using more of the EVA propellant. And I do like disembarking like this. The t interior textures are actually uh, from a pack of textures that I got off of ArtStation. So those were made by uh, somebody else for spaceship purposes. And I'm thankful of that. Those were very good textures that I use a lot. And the first time I tried to place the docking port Elster ended up flying off like this. I decided that it'd be prudent to Alt F4 at that point. It was a glitch after all. And so we got Elster back where Elster needed to be, and we got the docking port properly placed this time so that this third module could dock. Elster was left free floating, and at one point I decided to try and bring Elster's seat into the station. I wanted to try and move the seat so Elster could just stay in the station for us. That turned out to be a bad idea because when I tried to take the seat into Elster's KIS inventory, even though it should fit, it disappeared. So I don't know what happened there, but basically Elster lost Elster's seat and therefore cannot get back into the starship. I should have placed extra seats. Um, uh, some sort of minor glitchiness as we take a look inside. I also wanted to place a supply container inside the station because right now it only has oxygen. So we need more supplies in there before anybody can stay in there for a length of time. I did pack uh, life support containers in our cargo area on the starship for Elster to bring over. Or either of our Kerbals to bring over really. So we're grabbing the third module here. And in fact speaking of the other Kerbal, we decide to make use of our second Kerbal, Barbert, to get rid of the nose cone off of this before we send it off to the station. So Barbert is going to use the disassemble part. I think it's part of the USI stuff. I do have USI installed on this. So 
disassemble part and it had a docking port there. One other quirk is that my own docking ports don't seem to like to decouple from things when they're coupled to things in the VAB to start off. Otherwise, once in space, if they if they dock to something, they can undock. But if they're pre-docked to something in the VAB, they don't like to undock. I don't know why. Anyway, Barber did Barber's thing. Could not get rid of the decoupler because it's still the parent part of this module. Anyway, after getting Barbert back in, we bring him to dock. Elster's still free-floating, by the way, and we'll have to rescue him. That's the first thing on the next stream, to rescue Elster. Now, the starships are supposed to dock on the ends of this to the Destiny modules, but it occurred to me belatedly that uh, rotating it would not create the centrifugal force in the right direction. They'd be pushed against the walls of starship instead of on uh, to the floors, so we probably won't be rotating it to create artificial gravity. I have to figure that out. It'd have to attach the starships to the nose or the tail to do that. Anyway, that's for another time. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.